excited to hear some words of our today's chief guest, Dr. Indira Parikh, ma'am, for the Foundation Day lecture. Professor Indira J. Parikh is the president of Antar Disha, Directions from Within, and was the founder president of Flame University. She has been involved in creating the academic vision of holistic and liberal education and shaping Flame. Professor Parikh is on several boards of companies as an independent director and is the founder member of Sumedha's Academy of Human Context. Professor Pari has done MED from University of Rochester, New York, USA, and the doctorate from Gujarat University. She was a faculty at IIM Ahmedabad. She has taught at INSEAD, Fontainebleau, France, and Texas A&M University. Professor Pari has been honored with several Lifetime Achievement Awards, both nationally and internationally, for her contribution in education, HR, and for her work with women. She has written numerous articles published in national and international journals, and is the co-author and author of several books. Recently, Professor Pari has joined Dalham Foundation. It is a not-for-profit mission-driven organization engaged into advancing and promoting creative and liberal education. She is also engaged in developing leadership model conceptualized on workspace, social space, and life space anchored in self-reflectivity and identity. So, we kindly request respected Madam Pari to continue our event by sharing some words of wisdom with us in our segment of Foundation Day Lecture and the title being Crossing the Threshold, Beginning the New Journey into Education. Thank you very much, Vice Chancellor Avantika University, Deans and Faculty Avantika University, distinguished guests, parents of the students and students. First of all, I'd like to thank the Vice Chancellor for inviting me. I'm really honored and privileged. I'm going to talk about the threshold and the crossroad an institution and an individual takes in their lifetime. I will share this with personal examples and examples of other people. But before I begin, I like to say that both the Avantika University and the students stand at that point in time where this is the time, this is the sp space where you are at that crossroad and a major threshold of the institution and the students. Threshold is when you have to give up something and enter a new space to discover and get in touch with your potentials and your capabilities. Crossroad is that space where you make tough choices for which you are only responsible. And um, so let me share a, a very uh, nice story which I like sharing every time, because this is the story I tell myself when I have to make a major, major choice. The stories, all stories goes once upon a time. So this story also goes once upon a time, far, far from here, but just around the corner and long, long time ago, but just about yesterday was a land. This was a wonderful land and people in the land were very happy. But the land had a law. The law of the land was that when any child came of age, the child had to leave the land, be the child a girl, be the child a boy, to leave for two years to discover who he or she was. For it was believed that if the child did not leave, the parents did not grow up. And if the parents did not grow up, they did not let the child grow up and always pushed the child to remain a child and constantly kept advising, so the child never grew up. On one such day, a one young person came of age, and like all the traditions of the clan, uh, the identity, I'm not saying a boy or a girl, I'm just calling the person identity. Identity took the blessings of the elders, wished goodbye to the neighborhood chill friends, and started walking uh, to the boundary of the land. The identity walked and walked and walked by dusk fall came to the edge of the land. It was getting dusk time and it was getting to be a bit dark 
and there were too many roads in front of him, uh, but he did not know which road to take, for he had never taken any a decision like this ever before in the life. He started looking for someone to see if, if he could ask somebody some question and say which road leads to which destination. The identity was looking and once the eyes got used to the darkness, what the identity saw was an old, old woman, very, very old, sitting under a tree and doing something with something with her hand. So identity walked up to the lady and said, oh, wise woman, I have to leave the land. Which road I should take? There are too many roads in front of me. The old woman looked at him for a while and said, the young man, I've been here for ages and ages, for hundreds and hundreds of years, and thousands and thousands of young women, men and women, have come on this land, come to me to ask the same question. If I tell you which road you should take, and you did take the road, and the calamities befell on you, you will say, what a horrible woman, I should have taken another road. But to let that not happen, I will describe some roads to you, and you make a choice. Then she says, look, there is a road to the right, which is a very well laid out road. And many people, hundreds and hundreds of people opt for that road. They walk on the road, they have co-travelers, there are landmarks on the road, there are milestones on the road, and there are many shelters to eat and drink and to get rest. And maybe in a year and a day, you will reach your destination. Then she said, there are many other paths in front of you, but on the left, there is actually no road. It is only a direction. Very few people take that road, and people who take that road uh, come back and say, very few even return, and they come back and talk of strange tales which they have witnessed. Some have said they've encountered a deep swamp. There's hardly a road to cross the uh, swamp, and very few have returned. Some have said they've encountered a deep, dark, dense forest with lots of wild <coughs> animals, and very few have returned. Some have said they've encountered a deep, long uh, desert, and none have found an oasis to survive, and even fewer have returned. And then some have said they've encountered a very turbulent sea, which no <coughs> boats to go on it, and um, very few have come back. So she said, look, these are the choices you have. <coughs> And you have to make the choice of uh, which choice you want to make. So the identity was quite puzzled, did not know what to do. Then the lady, old woman said, okay, look, I'll tell you what, these, what it means to take these two choices. And I will ask the students who are listening to this story to make up in your mind which road you would you take. And then I will tell you what are the roads about. The old woman says the road to the right is a very well laid out road. It is a known road, it is a familiar known. You will know exactly what you need to do and how to do. And once you take that road, many a co travelers will walk with you. Some will walk with, some will tell you what to do, some will tell you what not to do, some will tell you what you should do, some will tell you what you should not do, some will tell you what is desirable, and some will tell you what is not desirable. And there are mileposts along the way. There are shelters along the way. It's a known road. It's a familiar road. You really can walk straight and maybe in a year and a day, you will reach your destination. Then she said the road to the left is actually no road. Not many people walk that road. But she said, if you take that road, the chances are you will fall down. And you will look around to blame somebody or you will blame yourself. But since there is nobody to really blame and help you out, you will learn to get up again and walk again. And you will discover, and also as you walk along that road, you will discover what you thought you could do, you discovered that you could not do. And what you thought you could not do it was an impossibility, you discovered you could do it. So you will discover what your real strengths are, what your real capabilities are, but you will learn the hard way. And then she said, when you walk a little bit further, you will come across a valley full of flowers. 
you will come across a, a mountain spring uh, gurgling down from the mountains, becoming a stream, becoming a mighty river and merging into the sea. You will also discover a huge infinite skies and all the birds that you could fly. And maybe you will say to yourself, like a bird, I can fly too. So finally, the choice is yours. This is an unknown road, unfamiliar road. You have to make departures and maybe discover a land or create a land of your own. Now, each individual, each institution and the country comes to that crossroad to say what departures it can make, what new dimensions it can create, what new institutions it can, it can create and uh, shape the destiny of the individual as well as the institution as well as the country. I will give you two examples for that. One was about 10 years ago. I, had a, I was coordinating a student about coordinating a program about 15 years ago. And then I received a call about 10 years, 10 years, five years ago, that somebody wants to meet me from Mozambique. So I came to Ahmedabad from Pune. I was still in flame at that time. And I met him. He was the, he was the president of Mozambique. He was a student at the management education program in IIM. And he had attended my classes. So he came and I was coordinating that program. So he came to me and said, Prof, before leaving, he came. Prof, tell me one thing which I should remember most. So I told him to sit down and I said, look, you are the only one from your country who has come to India, to the best of the institution, to learn from the best of the faculty. So in my view, I definitely believe that you have, the destiny has something great planned for you. So when you go back to your country, you will have many offerings say yes to them. Even if you feel you are not ready for it, just trust your confidence, trust your education, trust what you have learned and take it. So he had come back to tell me what he had done. In, when he had come, he had come on a state visit as a president of the country and he met only two people individually. One was the prime minister of India and one he came to talk to me. So in, when he came to the institution, his security was all around. He told the security to leave. And he said, Prof, I have come to tell you that when I first got my assignment on my return, it was three levels way above my capabilities. But I remembered your advice, that destiny is offering me something. So I took it. It was a tough job, but I took it. Three years later, I got promoted another three levels. I took that also. Uh, one year later, I became the vice president of the country and two years later, I became the president of the country. And he said, I've always remembered that uh, tough times are always there when you are in a position and you make a choice. These are always tough times. Nothing is uh, laid out to you on rose petals. You have to make tough choices. You have to make tough decisions and you have to trust yourself and value yourself that you can do it no matter how difficult it is. The second is, I can tell you of my personal example. When I got married, I was 18 years old and my husband was a PhD in physics in the University of Chicago. At that time, it was not as difficult going to the country as it is now for the spouses. So I went with him. He took me to meet his dean, uh, whose name was uh, Dr. Wuris. I remember his name also. He was a tall gentleman in his 50s he asked me, young lady, what do you want to do? I said, I want to study. So he looked at my husband and said, Parik, send your wife to study. He said, sir, but I don't have the funds. So he asked one question, do you have tuition waiver? He said, no, I pay my fees. The very next morning at eight o'clock, he called my husband and says, I cannot give your wife money to study, but I definitely can waive your tuition. So you don't pay your tuition fees and let your wife go to school. And that was just the beginning of my educational journey. Along the way, there have been many such opportunities and many such individuals who have created and opened up the new spaces for me. So I'm telling all the students of Avantika University, you are at that point in time where you will get many opportunities. 
please just take them you will the destiny will, destiny will offer you many many aspects to choose from and offer you do not get scared and do not be afraid and just take it and uh, work on it that can only happen if you can trust yourself have faith in yourself and the education you have received the family you are a part of and the country you are a part of um i have five things to state five basic statements to make to the students at, and the institution the first is you have to ask yourself first of all you need to take some time in solitude to reflect some on some very basic questions of life the first is what is the purpose of this education and what is the education you are in for what is it that you want to do with this education and you must ask yourself today's generation is afraid of being in solitude they always want to be with somebody talking to somebody doing something in activities but there are also moments to be quiet to reflect because yourself is that aspect which really gives you the right answers and which give you the correct directions so if you have to make a tough choice you must sit down in isolation and ask yourself some very basic questions and and give yourself time the self will answer it for you so the first question is to ask is the what is the purpose of education and why are you here and you are here to study study and engage in a spirit of inquiry the second is the role which you are taking the role as a student needs to be very self disciplined see if you take a role like in colleges many people say college is for fun and games no it is not it is for learning process it is the learning process and it is a spirit of inquiry and what you learn now will last you for a lifetime i have seen that in my life whatever opportunities i have got at some point of time is that it has had a purpose i went to a design school in denmark i went to um, the university in copenhagen because it was free so i went there for a year and believe me one day i was called by a professor of philosophy and said uh, young lady you are from india i said yes he says do you know indian philosophy i said indian philosophy formally i don't know but i have been brought up in a family very much anchored into a philosophical upbringing so he says would you share that with us so i said yes there were 20 professors very senior in their 60s and 70s who were at that age interested in what india was all about what indian philosophy was all about and and gave me so much respect that i think my mind was made up that being a teacher and being in education is the right place where it doesn't really matter how young or old you are education gets respect so i talked to them for 2 hours about my upbringing and that's all i knew i did not know anything else i did not know uh, upanishads or vedas or anything but i was brought up in that tradition so i could share a lot of things and they were most interested in the uh, multiple lives that i knew because that was discussed in my home all the time so everything you learn is of importance and what you miss out is you will regret it for the rest of your life today i regret something <clears throat> my father was a big astrologer he he used to prepare kundalis on a very innovative basis and he lived with me for some months and he would say indira mere se sikho mere se sikho and i would be so preoccupied with iim and iim teaching i did not really give any attention or any time i said papa sikhungi papa sikhungi but then my father passed away and i today regret that i really could have found some time and learned from him the new methodology today i'm hunting all his papers to see what he had written so my uh, statement to you is ke please please whatever opportunities you have and this is the time you will have many many opportunities to learn please do not waste them and give time to them and especially with your families do not uh, you will regret not having learned something from them or your academic institutions or your faculty please take this time this is your time and your space make the most of it the third part, third point is how do you relate to people who are the people in your world 
and today's generation lives and thrives with friends but make good friends friends who are interested in learning who are interested in discussing about the world friends who are discussing about the world and dis developing a world view unless you develop all this you will not be a holistic person you will be a very narrow person working in narrow spaces and having very little world view about anything so it's very important to um, uh, relate with people talk to people and not just uh, what is the new word of the lingo is chill out you in chilling out you don't turn anything because you're talking of all the things which are not so relevant or they just don't mean much but have a dialogue have a debate and sort out your mind or the confusions you have that is what friends are and in the four or five years you are here you will build lifelong friendships so develop some good friends and sustain them for your lifetime i have friends who are with me for 60 years since i was 5 i have friends and recently we i was in a school in calcutta and they were chinese girls and some of them came back from canada and hunted me out from google and we met after 60 years looking at each other's a uh, grown faces and just talked about grandchildren and what the children were being educated it's very important to uh, be with the right people and make right friends and do the right things the fourth is you must be able to appreciate those who help you out you must praise your younger people praise your younger siblings so praise is a very good thing all of us are looking for appreciation but we don't give appreciation it's very important to give appreciation to your teachers to your family to your parents to your uh, grandparents they have done much for you they only wish well for you and so you must thank them you see in our country there's one very uh, nasty thing we constantly tell our children what we have done for them i have done this for you i have sacrificed this for you i have done this for you but we rarely tell our children what happiness they have brought to us so it's important that we tell our parents how much they have done for us and how much you appreciate and how much you respect and i think it's very important to respect the parents this is the culture and the heritage of our tradition of respecting the elders and getting their blessings now today we have changed quite a bit on our birthdays we go and do happy birthday and cut a cake but in the my times when i was growing up on our birthdays we used to go and distribute sweets to the poor children and we used to do havan and we used to do bhajans and we used to go and take blessings from all the elders and the blessings are very very important in our lifetime so please do not forget to take blessings for your teachers and if you look at our traditional heritage the gurus were the most important people more important than the parents because they gave the gift of wisdom to the young people now what has happened in our education institution is we give knowledge but we do not give wisdom so it's very important to have a holistic education where we impart uh, wisdom to our students so they can learn to manage their lives in a more meaningful manner the fifth dimension is that we need to uh, do things which we want to do um we need to take initiatives if we want to take initiative if we want to go and meet somebody and go and meet a friend whom we haven't met for a long time i think we should do it otherwise very often we'll end up with a regret that we did not go and meet the person the also it's important to have a dialogue with the elderly people to help them share their lives um we can learn a lot from the lives of people of yesterday because we can realize what life they live with and what um, better opportunities we have in our lives so my uh, i would now close with a statement that um, in our lives we need to make take initiatives to make a life wholesome for ourselves we need to be self disciplined we need to be um, appreciate we must value ourselves and we must you see seeking appreciation and approval from others makes us dependent on other people and it becomes an opium we have to be self we have to accept our self worth we have to accept our own value 
and say to ourselves that okay, God gives us a lot of things, sometimes very painful things, but it is for learning a lesson and, and to become stronger out of that. So please take all the events which come in your life as a learning experience, as a growing experience, and the focus has to be on growth and not on acquisition of knowledge, but wisdom to lead a life with dignity and grace. Uh, God bless you, all the students. Have a wonderful time. Thank you very much. And once again, Vice Chancellor, thank you for this opportunity. I really appreciate it.